Okay, so we have Lincoln High School's 10th and 11th grade team. Their project is Transhumanism, Human Adaptability in the Extremes. And your time begins now. Thank you, Lincoln. A majority of us in here has probably drunk it from a plastic water bottle in our lives before. It only took me a few seconds to drink the water from this bottle, but now this bottle would take 450 years to properly degrade. That is about six generations of my family. Why is it such a drastic case? Plastic is a part of our everyday lives. Everything we wear, consume, and eat has plastic components. Almost all plastic is made of petroleum. Beyond contributing to the carbon footprint, increasing global warming, plastics are not biodegradable. We are literally swimming on plastics. The most obvious consequence of our planet's plastic pollution can be found in our oceans. Currently, there are five plastic islands floating around, two of them being twice the size of the state of Texas. Microplastics are a huge problem to both animal and human health. Microplastics are portions of plastic that are nearly invisible. They are generated by fragmentation and broken down plastics. It is estimated that fish ingest anywhere from 12 to 24,000 tons of microplastic pollutants each year. By consequence, humans ingest these plastics by eating contaminated sea life. While microplastics are a relatively new problem to human health, there is still plenty of evidence that shows it is harmful to our body. Potential health risks include a weakened immune system, cancers, and many other things. Humans are exposed to, the, to microplastics through ingestion, inhalation, and dermal contact. It is estimated that humans ingest almost 5 grams of microplastics per week. To communities with pre-existing health disparities, such as our Lincoln Park community, microplastics are likely to make these disparities even worse. Scientists in 2016 have found a bacterium at a PET bottle recycling facility, which uses plastics and carbon as its primary energy source. This bacterium is named Rhodococcus rubber. The bacterium Rhodococcus rubber eats and actually digests plastics. A key feature of this bacterium is that it produces enzymes and breaks down plastics. This is important because plastic bottles are mainly composed of the polymer called PET. Nature's creativity to come up with solutions to humans' plastic pollution is amazing. Can we also use this creativity to help ourselves? To help ourselves against microplastics, we can take advantage of our forgotten organ microbiome. For every human cell in the body, there are 10 bacteria. The microbiome is mainly composed of bacteria, which are beneficial for human health, meaning that microbiome contribute to our digestion process, among other things. What we propose is to modify the human microbiome at the genetic level. We chose the lactobacillus bacteria, abundant in the human gut. The main idea is to introduce key genetic features that allow lactobacillus to break down plastics, such as PET. As an example, we may introduce the genes responsible for coding of the enzyme, PETase. They're responsible of the breakdown into its basic components. But how are we going to accomplish this? So CRISPR-Cas9 is a tool that edits genes, those being DNA sequences. The discovery of CRISPR-Cas9 method earned a Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 2020, and this DNA method is currently changing the biomedical industry and scientists are finding new ways to use uh, CRISPR-Cas9 for many purposes, such as modifying organisms. We'd like to use this technology to engineer bacteria, such as the lactobacillus, and then so we transfer, a, a safe way to transfer it would be through a microbiome, and we will use yogurt in a company in California. We will grow our bacteria in large amounts and put them into yogurt, and then we'll deliver it in staple food items and we put it in a community and we'll use it as a probiotic yogurt. 
Once we have the desired genes, we will test it if it works in vitro dishes and if that goes to plan, we'll test it on animals and to see if it has any side effects. And then in the end, we plan to have a clinical trial on humans only if it works. And bottom line, we create a human microbiome that is resistant to uh, microplastics. <laughs> <laughs> and we want to acknowledge everybody that has helped us. And here's a video. So I'm Gustavo Fraga. My name is Kashana Bunting. My name is Aiden Jackson. My name is Denny Perdo Jorquez. And our team name was Microbiome Designers, and we're from Lincoln High School. Thank you. Yeah.